Okay, Case, get that, will you, buddy? Sure. <clears throat> Hi, I'm sorry. I can't find my key anywhere. And this is Hi, honey. Uh -huh. Hi. Uh, so, dinner is almost ready. Your sister's coming. We're going to have kind of a little family thing here tonight. Ex oh, look at you. You're wonderful. You're Mr. Wonderful. Like, I don't hear that from women all the time. Mm. But it's a little nicer hearing it coming from you. What's up? What's up? Tough day? Oh, yeah, it was. Will and Gwen, they had a terrible scare. What happened? Uh, Sophie, the, the biological mother of their child, uh, kidnapped the child and took her off to New York. What? Did yeah. They, did they find the kid? Yeah, yeah. And, um, she was sick, and so Sophie brought her back to Memorial. She's fine now, but I had to arrest Sophie, and it was really kind of heartbreaking. Uh, she sounds just like a lonely, unhappy kid that misses her baby. Yeah, but what she did was horrible, it really was. You know what, you should call Gwen and Will. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, Case. I don't want to call. Listen, honey, I don't want you to cut yourself off from your friends. Oh, I have to get that. Hi, Kate. Hi, Kate. <laughs> How you doing? You look great. Yeah, thanks. So do you. Wow. Did I interrupt something? No, no, I'm just getting another lecture on how to live my life. No, come on, it was not a lecture. Oh, well, I know how he feels. I just dodged one of those get a better life lectures myself. Well, it's good to hear I'm not the only one who needs to get a life. Oh, yeah, well, in my case, my friends are split on the issue of my future. Vienna says that I should date Brad, and Henry says I should avoid him like the plague. What does Katie say? I've already made my decision. Brad and I are professional colleagues, period. Yeah? You feel good about that? Best decision I ever made. Thank you. So, Casey, it must feel really good to be back. I mean, it, it's an adjustment, you know? It's tough getting back into the groove of things. And... It'd be a whole lot easier if you contacted your friends. You mean be needy and dependent? It's not what your mom's saying, Casey. Are you gonna go back to school? I like working at the Lakeview. I know, for now. That's... Yeah, but it's not a career, I know. You know, the most important thing is that Casey's home. Isn't that right, honey? That's right, honey. You know, when you said you weren't gonna come back to Oakdale, I'm glad you changed your mind. Sorry, I thought I'd turn this off. Well, no, answer it. Answer Sorry, it. excuse me. Hello? Hey, dude. Guess who this is? Matt, is that you? Yeah. I just got out of jail last week, man. I am free and at large, as they say. When can we meet up? I'm, I'm kind of tied up. <laughs> so untie yourself. It's business. OK. Where do you want to meet? Listen, I have to go out. Why? Come on, Case. Your mom's looking forward to this. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, an old friend of mine called, and yeah, I'll just tell him I'm busy. No, 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 you should go. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. Yes, right? Um, right, honey? Okay. Okay. Thanks. I'll see you, Kate. Oh, so good to see you. Yeah. Hey, listen, why don't you come by the station and watch us tape a show? I will. I uh, heard you and Brad are quite a couple. I know that Casey was just was kidding and everything, but um, I have tuned into Oakdale now a couple of times, and it does appear that uh, Brad's pretty crazy about you. It's kind of obvious. Yeah. Oh, you guys are just romantics. <laughs> and you think every guy is in love with me. Sorry. Yes, Jack. Marco, I, uh, I need your help. It's about Parker. Uh, guys, give me a second. Yeah, I, I was going anyway. OK. okay. Yeah, what's, what's going on? I'm at Metro. Sam Hutchins has been has been shot and killed. Uh, I've got the shooter and I'm bringing him down to the station. I'd appreciate it if you could meet me there, maybe maybe handle taking the statement. So, but you've got the shooter in custody? Yeah. And I can't handle the case. Why? It's Parker. What? He was acting to protect his mother, Marco. Sam was raping Carly. Oh my god, Jack, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'll be I'll be right there. And could you bring Tom with you, please? My son's gonna need a lawyer. Uh, uh, Tom, uh, Jack needs us. Um, Parker's in trouble. So, how are you guys holding up? We're hanging in there. Thanks for helping us, Tom. Parker, how you doing? 
It's pretty shaken up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough, tough night. But uh, we gotta ask you some questions. Can my mom and dad come with me? Of course. You're a minor. You're allowed to have your parents in the room. And you're also allowed to have an attorney. That's why we asked Tom to come down. Interrogation room's ready, Chief. Okay, let's go. the initial interview of Parker Snyder in the matter of the fatal shooting of Sam Hutchins, also present in the room, our Lieutenant Margot Montgomery Hughes, the boy's parents, Carly Tenney, Jack Snyder, and also the boy's attorney, Thomas Hughes. Parker, do you know why you're here? Yes, because I killed Sam. Was it an accident? Parker, you say that shooting Mr. Hutchins was not an accident. You want to tell me in your own words what happened tonight? Jack, Carly, I think it's probably a good idea if we have a consultation before Parker answers any more questions. I just need to know Parker's side of the story. I think having a, um, an attorney in the room is sufficient. You can stop proceedings at any time. Jack. Parker, why, why don't we go talk to Tom, okay? No, no, Dad, please, let me just get this over with. Okay. Parker has nothing to hide, Margo. Parker, want to tell me what happened tonight? Uh, my dad and I got two hockey tickets. I thought Sam was trying to get us away from my mom. Wait, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not tracking this. Margo, don't you remember? The, the, the tickets were left on my desk. I thought they were from Parker's coach. We were having trouble with Parker. That's why he gave me the night off. All right. But Parker thought they were from Sam. I didn't believe him, though. Okay. I think that Parker can speak for himself. So you thought these tickets were from Sam, but you went to the hockey game anyway? Yes, but I was still very worried about my mom. So my dad said that we could check in on her after the game. But when we got to the house, my mom wasn't there. Really? And then what did you do? My dad called her at Metro, mm -hmm. and then I talked to her on the phone, and I asked her if Sam was bugging her. She said no. So when you talked to your mom at that point, she said that she was fine? Yeah, she said that, but I didn't like the idea of her being alone with Sam. So when my dad fell asleep, I snuck out of the house and went to the club. And what happened when you got to Metro? I saw Sam, and he was all over my mom, attacking her. So I shot him. Parker, where did you get the gun? Was it under the bar at Metro, or...? No, no, I got it from the farm. So you left Metro and you went to the farm to get the gun? No, I went to the farm first to get the gun, and then I went to Metro. And why would you do that if your mother said that she was fine? I just knew something bad was gonna happen. How did you know that? I just... I knew. <sighs> okay, so... Your statement is that you went to the farm and you got the gun and you brought it to Metro before you saw that this man was trying to rape your mother. Stop, Margo. Parker, don't say another word. No more questions until I consult with Parker's parents. Jack, do you see where Margo's headed with this? Yep. What? What's wrong? Parker admitted that he got the gun before he knew you were being assaulted. That shows premeditation. Parker knew that something was wrong. He, he gets these premonitions. He, he always has. Yeah, that's true, Tom. Well, a prosecutor can piece together a case just from what Parker has already said. An unstable young boy goes to the club with intent to kill his mother's new oh, boyfriend. Tom, it's not true. You know Sam it's was not. attacking Carly, for God's sake. I'm just telling you what a prosecutor can make out of what he said already. This boy is in serious trouble. I'm really sorry, but I'm gonna have to hold Parker until he can appear before the judge. Margo. I'm sorry. I, it's not a simple case anymore, juvenile or not. Margo, you and I both know from personal experience sometimes a kid just needs a break. Tom, let's not make this personal. I'm doing my job. 
I'll see the judge first thing in the morning. I'll get Parker out. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tom. Tomorrow, can, can we talk to Parker for a minute alone, please? Absolutely, yes. Go. I'm sorry. 